With The Mandalorian Chapter 4 still fresh in our minds, we can't stop thinking about all the amazing easter eggs hidden throughout the episode. It was definitely one of the best episodes yet, and full of awesome surprises. We've got them all right here in the video for you, but be careful, if you haven't seen the episode yet, there are a ton of spoilers ahead. It is becoming more and more clear with every passing episode that, while The Mandalorian is determined to tell a story that is unique in the Star Wars universe, it still isn't all that separate from the movies and games that came before it. Chapter 4 of The Mandalorian was absolutely packed with easter eggs from the rest of the Star Wars canon, and they serve to make the world of the show even richer. Again, if you haven't seen Chapter 4 yet, there are definitely some spoilers ahead that should be enjoyed along with the rest of the episode. We highly recommend checking it out before you continue. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into all of the awesome things you might have missed in this week's episode of The Mandalorian. In the very first scene of the episode, we get an underwater glimpse at a bunch of blue shrimp looking creatures. While these might seem like a brand new invention, they have actually been around for a long time. They are called Krill and date all the way back to the Star Wars visual encyclopedia, but this is their very first appearance on screen. Next up, we have the Clutunians, the aliens who came in to disrupt the people peaceful krill fishing. They looked awfully familiar, and for good reason. We've seen a Clutoonian or two before, once working as a henchman for Jabba the Hutt in the time between A New Hope and Return of the Jedi, and another as a bounty hunter working alongside a young Boba Fett during the Clone Wars. When we first see the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda looking for a planet to seek shelter on, Mando refers to the child as a womp rat, which isn't exactly flattering. While they've never appeared on screen, they have been mentioned before and are notoriously unattractive. How dare he talk about our child like like that. Once they land on Sorgon, Mando and Baby Yoda wind up in a local tavern, where we see a couple of familiar faces. First, there are a couple of Twi'leks in the background, or I think that's how you pronounce their name, because no matter where you are in the galaxy, they are bound to show up. Also, a big cat looking creature hisses at Baby Yoda. This is actually a Loth cat, which you'll recognize if you've ever seen Star Wars Rebels. One non-alien appearance that jumped out at us was the character of Stoke, one of the villagers who approaches the Mandalorian for help. Stoke is played by Eugene Cardero, who plays Pillboy on The Good Place. The character of Omera, the woman who has some serious romantic tension with our helmeted hero, seems to have a lot more going on than meets the eye. For one, she is the only member of her community who knows how to shoot a blaster, which, for a farmer, is an interesting skill to have, to say the least. We're guessing that we'll be seeing more of her in episodes to come, or at least we hope we will. One of the elements of the episode that gave us the most pause was the ATST, the giant two-legged machine that the Clutunians surprised the Mandalorian and Kara with. The last time we saw one of those was during the Battle of Endor in Return of the Jedi. So how exactly did the Clutunians get their hand on it? Or how did it wind up on Sorgon in the first place? Are they working for the remains of the Empire? Or did they scavenge it after the war? Whatever the answer is, it seems important to the future of the series. There is one funny moment with Baby Yoda that might mean more than it originally appeared. When he is about to devour yet another live frog in front of the children, they exclaim in protest, and he spits it out, alive. While it seems like his species are omnivorous, it was always pretty clear that Yoda was a vegetarian. Could this little moment indicate that Baby Yoda is becoming more like his predecessor? Or was it just a sight gag? Finally, there was the mysterious bounty hunter whom Kara took down in the woods. From the looks of its snout, it could be a Bravian, but we aren't entirely sure. Do you recognize this guy? We love how The Mandalorian has used all of the Star Wars canon to build a new and exciting world. It really adds to the details of the show. What do you think of these easter eggs? Did we miss any big ones that we should know about? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rants to keep up with all of our latest videos.